we're just going to talk about code. We're going to talk about development, right? We're going to keep it simple. I mean, we're going to start with the first thing. And this was a question that people always ask me here on the community. And they sent it again last night through the DMs. They're like, Joe, what was one project that you really had a challenge? And, and you was like, man, this was kind of difficult, right? You don't have to go into super detail, but maybe something that you felt like it was difficult for you uh, in the beginning. So if Jeremiah, you want to start it, go ahead. <laughs> uh, your mic is off real quick. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I guess I have to say when I stopped working for Air Force a little bit and then I went to go work for a Space Force, uh, I was only comfortable with front end web technologies at that point. And then the Space Force had me doing full stack. So learning like all the different technologies on the job was definitely, definitely difficult. Um, but being hands on and being able to apply it after I learned it was definitely helpful. But that was probably the hardest thing I'd ever had to do and learn as a dev. Yeah, that's that, man. Go ahead, uh, Chris Sean. <laughs> What the? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just gonna throw it. I'm, oh, gonna, okay, I'm gonna start sure. throwing the ball at everybody. The most you know, what was a difficult, difficult project? Thing. Yeah, well, a difficult, difficult project. project. Yeah. Man, um, I think the most difficult project for me was when I had to build a. Oh dang, that's a lot. Holy, dang man, why do you have to pick throw this at me, bro? <laughs> um, I think when I built my first uh full end website for Entrepreneur.com, we were building a third party app. Um, kind of like social media. It's Entrepreneur Insider. If you want to check it out, I don't work for them anymore, but don't check it out. Never mind. Uh, but um, but yeah, it was when I built that because that's when I was forced to do backend. I absolutely hate doing backend development, man. Um, I love front end. I love JavaScript. Uh, but yeah, that was the most cool thing because I'm not a backend developer. But they threw me in there, got it done, but I got yelled at a lot at the same time too. How about you, Danny? What was something that was difficult for you? You know, it's not even a work project. I, my mind was just racing because I was like, okay, he's just throwing at anybody. So I, I don't have time to really prepare an answer. But I remember I was uh, a part of this organization. I was on the committee called Give Camp, Give Camp Memphis. And what we do is basically it's like a weekend hackathon, but it's a hackathon for good where the goal is to help out as many nonprofits as possible, make the websites, make software for the businesses, whatever it may be. And it's a good time. Like all the developers in the area just kind of hang out. I was jumping around in many groups. I was wearing many hats. And there was one group that I was helping was a women advocacy group. And so the, one thing that they needed on their project was they needed a button on their website that if someone presses that button, it will redirect them to the weather.com website. It'll erase their history. It's like a whole big thing. And I was like, look, like this is a weekend like hackathon. Like what you're talking about? Like I, I this is a big, big ordeal. Why do you even need something this big like what, what What are you trying to do with this and like if a woman is being abused and beaten and she's looking for help and the abuser finds out she's looking for help do you think he's going to smile or do you think he's going to deal with that problem and i was like damn like that's that's so heavy and i we went two days straight trying to figure that out and we ended up solving it by the end of those two days and we added that uh, functionality to the website it would erase their history redirecting the weather.com for their location and they were safe so that's probably like one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do in such a short amount of uh, time. Nice, nice. How about you, Dave? So mine is less tech related, but more process driven related. So a long time ago, we had a .NET shop and I was introducing Ruby on Rails into that mix. So if you've ever tried to do that, it's not an easy job. And essentially what ended up happening was through a lot of processes, procedures, aka red tape, I was very restricted and limited to what I could do. They kept trying to push me to deploy to a Windows server instead of a Linux environment. And that just doesn't really work too well if you come from the Rails world. And keep in mind, this was all pre-WSL two days. So essentially, they never heard of Amazon S3 for file uploads. They wanted me to store everything locally or in the database, which if you've ever tried to store any kind of base 64 large images or anything in the database, it's just not scalable, not a good idea. And so I think the hardest part was me trying to play the political game with them to explain, here's the best practices. Here's why we should do it like this. and just 
keep getting roadblocked every step of the way because we didn't have contracts with Amazon. We didn't have contracts with Azure. What is this whole cloud services? No, we want to keep everything locally. So dealing with a lot of those kind of battles really limited how powerful of an application I could make because we immediately ran into scalability issues. We ran into a lot of technical debt that we were having to essentially create to get around all of these hoops and red tape that they put in place. So essentially, red tape is good. It's for checks and balances. It keeps us safe. It keeps us accountable. And it can really help us out if it serves a purpose. But red tape, just because it's red tape, is horrible. So if you were stifling, if you were hindering productivity, if you're hindering innovation because of red tape, which is not providing any kind of value, then you need to relook at your policies and to see why was this even put here in the first place? And is it an issue today? Yeah. Nice. Thanks. That was back in the day. Yeah. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. How about Damn. you, Trent? Um, okay, so it seems like mostly we're talking about like, Projects in like at our jobs or employment projects or jobs or <clears throat> projects in school or projects that you've built personally. You know, I'm, I've seen you create a lot of projects that you've like. Yeah, no, I'm always making stuff. But uh, so I have like no employment history. Uh, mm -hmm. I have an internship now, but it hasn't started yet. Um, but so I'll just talk about like this. Uh, so this video I made maybe like a few months ago, it was like I made a multiplayer game. So I made this uh, website with WebSockets. And the point of it is one person draws and everyone else guesses. But uh, so that was full stack and I had to do the back end and the front end. But I really cheaped out in hosting it. I wanted to host it for free. And then what happened was I invited a bunch of people to play, uh, play the game. And the game wouldn't really work all the time. And I don't think it was my code or at least I don't think it was. Maybe it was. I don't know, actually. But I think it's because I paid nothing for hosting it. So for a multiplayer game, you can't really host that for free. And then uh, the people that were testing it were also like other like developers like Ben Awad and stuff. And they just started injecting JavaScript into my site and just showing me how like not secure it is. And that was embarrassing. They did that in front of everyone. That's so now hilarious. everyone probably thinks I'm a chump. <laughs> we made it. I, I never fixed any of the bugs either. I just left it up full, fully bugged out, fully ready to uh, get crashed and hacked, I guess. But hello. <laughs> Yeah, no, man. Benoit is definitely a character. He He's the guy that will do that. He's definitely the guy that will do that. For right. Sure. <laughs> so how about you, Chow? Yeah, so I think the hardest thing was, well, I'll preface it with this. I made the mistake early on in my journey was I kind of skipped through all the basics really quick because I just wanted to get to JavaScript. So I kind of just hushed over it went straight to react so like that was i learned later on that that was a huge mistake so i remember taking a course where we had to use react and redux and like redux was just like this whole other monster that i've never ever messed with before and i was streaming that project live and it was my first time too messing with the uh, api so i was trying to make this nba stats app everyone was watching me live and i'm just like okay guys i have no idea what the hell i'm doing right now like it's someone in the chat has got to help me with Redux. Like this is, I don't understand it. And it like for a whole month, I was just live streaming every mistake, every mistake until it finally, finally like worked for the first time. Um, and I caught that moment. So it was cool. But I think that whole month was just like the most frustrating thing I've ever been through in my life. So yeah, for those listening, don't, don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely Redux is, it gets annoying the first time because, you know, if you're not coming from a functional uh, programming background, like there's like new concepts, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but definitely, I mean, for me, I would say the most difficult project that I worked on, I used to work for a company where uh, they sell glasses in my job was to be front end developer initially. And then somehow they drove me into creating an application that calculated uh, people's pupils and then placed the, the glasses on their face. And I'm like, this is not what I do. Like I do HTML, CSS. Like, do you guys like that? That's what I'm good at. I'm in web development. I don't want to be coming in here and calculating people's faces. And, you know, like, that's not what I do. But I, at the end, I, I got it done somehow. And I was like, holy shoot, man, I can't believe I even got that thing done of like, and, and it's pretty cool because um, pretty much 
every time that you go to any page, automatically it places the, the glasses on the person. So they upload their photo. They get to have like a preview of how the glasses looks on them. So it was pretty nice, but it was just like crazy, like super challenging. Like that's not what I do, you know? 